for the first time in like two years. <laughs> so <laughs> feel naked. <laughs> so. What an amazing audience we are live with Tony Karkomo. Yes, he just said he shaved his beard. We don't know though, it's the first time. Like, you look great. It's the first time we're seeing you. I, I like, feel like I have a baby face. <laughs> 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 but tell me, which of your talents do you think is responsible for us connecting at this specific time in history? Uh, probably my um, engineering teaching background. So, you know, what I do right now is actually uh, go around to different engineering firms and teach uh, the latest software, um, how to use it uh, the best and most proficient way. You know, so I've been doing it. I've been doing it for 21 years. Wow. You know, so it's all I've known. I I started in the military, learning civil engineering through the uh, U.S. Air Force, and took that experience and knowledge, and you know, used it out in the civilian world, and just kept going with it. Um, and during my free time, I've actually spent my personal time learning and advancing my skills. Um, I've gotten better and better till I got to a point I became an expert in the software. And now I'm just kind of going around sharing my knowledge, you know. So That's it's like fun. ABCs for me, but it's like algebra for everybody else because it's, it is one of the most hardest uh, design software to learn in our industry. Mm -hmm. so, so specifically, what software is that? Uh, so we use uh, AutoCAD Civil 3D. Okay. Yeah. All so right. you have AutoCAD. That's like the Honda Civic. But when you get to like the Ferrari, which is a Civil 3D. Wow. Yeah. So I mean, it's AutoCAD a, in itself is yeah. challenging for, yeah, the, for mm -hmm. the normal user. Normal users. Yeah. So uh, it's it's but it is the foundation. So everything you learn in AutoCAD, you will be using in Civil 3D. Mm -hmm. So it sits on top of Civil. Uh, it sits on top of AutoCAD. So it is the platform. The base platform. Have you side. ever used uh, Coral Draw by chance? No, I've okay, heard of it. Yeah, that's right. more, uh, I guess that's more of a. It's more graphic. Graphics, oriented, editing yeah. pictures and stuff. Yeah. Uh, I played around with it when I was editing some uh, logos and stuff right. one, at one time. All so, right. uh, but. Uh, Do you find yourself designing often, or are you more well, on the consulting? Well, so I, I'm, I'm consultant. So I do a lot of training, but I also do engineering design. So mm -hmm. I do run into developers where they need design support. Besides going to a big engineering company and getting, you know, having to pay a big a lot of money, they can come to me with my team, my engineer, my architect, my civil team. We can do it at half the time and half the price. That's good. So, what's the best way for people to connect with you? Uh, through usually social media. So I'm really big on LinkedIn. So I pretty much live on LinkedIn. All right, Tony Carcamo. Uh, yep. So uh, you can find me on LinkedIn to under Tony Carcamo, and the company name is uh, CAD Learning uh, Civil Civil CAD Learning Solutions. So, Silver CAD, C A D, yeah. Yeah, so it's uh, solutions. Yep. Yeah. But um, um, for the past, you know, several years, you know, I was a CAD manager, um, I was a design manager, I was, you know, so I did a lot of training, tech support, and also engineering. Hmm. So it was kind of multitasking through other companies, and also a little bit uh, IT. <laughs> So, have you ever gotten any rewards or awards in what you've doing done? Uh, you can take certifications, but a reward. I would say the probably the most prestigious award I've gotten is probably through Autodesk and become a, an AutoCAD expert elite. So wow. very, very few people have, have gotten to that level where they respect your knowledge and kind of our job is to go and help provide tech support through Autodesk forums. So it's kind of our job now to go in there and help Autodesk and, um, and answer some of these questions that some of these younger users are coming in and say, hey, how do you, how do, you do this? And so we go in there and try to provide that support to those young Users. That's amazing. So uh, there's probably uh, one a hundred or two hundred across the the whole world. So, um, but uh, here in the states, there's probably maybe maybe a hundred. So, wow. yeah. So we meet once a year at Autodesk University. So it's kind of <laughs> wow. nice because they meet people from all over the world. Yeah, that are doing but, this. Yeah. So uh, that's great. Um, that is amazing. I can imagine that in itself and the revenue stream that will create in terms of automatically. It does help having that yeah. title, AutoCAD expert lead, but I always tell people, I don't know everything, okay? It's almost impossible to know everything of in the course, software. Of yeah, course, but you know the principles yeah, that are necessary. Yeah. You, could, you, could, you could turn to the book and say, okay, this yeah. is how I do this, and yeah. I just do that. Yeah, yeah? So, uh, yeah I can see that. Okay, <clears throat> what's one other thing you've done consistently over the last three years? Um, Consistently, well, um, I would say beta testing some stuff for Autodesk. So, during my personal free time throughout several years, is go every probably every week go on there and play with the software and see if I can break it, and then give that feedback <laughs> to Autodesk. You yeah. know, but then I turn around and figure out, okay, there is a bug in the software. 
how can I find a way to make it work temporarily, a workaround? So that's something I constantly do. You know, there's always so many different ways to do something in the software. So I'm always looking to find ways to help companies, hey, have you tried this option to do it this way instead of that way? So, um, How does that make you feel? Uh, I like it, you know. Um, in the beginning, I, was, I wasn't too in favor of it because when I was working for an engineering firm, I didn't want to share that knowledge because I'm making my competitor better. Sure. So I kind of kept it in, you know. I didn't want to share all the best uh, tips and tricks and knowledge because I wanted to make the company better. But then now that I'm a consultant, I, don't, I, don't, I want to share it all out, you know. Yeah. I want to make everybody hap you know, happier and better. So uh, it's good. Um, it puts you as the authority of it as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. So um, just recently, last week, I actually went to uh, a local university to go set up the very first ever certification class for this software. They don't have this at this local university, and so we're getting the ball moving and see if I can go teach That's at great. this and uh, and kind of share this young. Uh, um, this knowledge to this young engineers are taking these classes and stuff so I, I want to help them get that job they want because the last 10 years I've been teaching the college graduates you know they learn all the stuff in the book but let me show them how to really use the software yeah. and take those skills they learn and read about and put it and apply it in the software so I've, there's been you know engineers from A&M to tech you know Texas Tech Kansas I've taught throughout years and you know, I want to show them the best way to do it in the software, you know. So I don't have all the answers, but I want to show them what I've learned. And sometimes I'll show them the mistakes I've made and say, hey, don't do this. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you're going to cause you more headache in the software, more issues. So, uh, mm, which is the value of a good coach, right? I mean, I, I try to do my best, you know. I, um, sometimes I make a mistake, and then I'll try to share that knowledge to other people and say, hey, don't, don't do this, you know. Yeah. So, but I do have a really close network of friends that are also expert leads. So we, we share ideas, yeah, you know, there's about connect. five of us that I'm really close with. And, you know, once a month we'll talk on the phone and stay up all night talking about, hey, how are you doing this? And this is what I do. You know, they're in different states and stuff and different companies. So I know people that you know, work for, you know, the big companies that have 50,000 employees. And I know, you know, experts that work with only 30 employees. You know, we still get together and share our knowledge. We, we do different, you know, we do it in different ways because of the size of the company yeah. and the method. But uh, it is great to, to, to interact with those guys, you know. And I love it. Yeah, Who did so. you learn that from though, in your family? Who in your family well, has that, that model of um, that engineering model? Um, well, I think the motivation from my dad. My dad was always that type of guy that he was a plumber. He was a mechanic, electrician. Uh, he was almost everything. He, he liked to do everything, so um, he kind of you know, pushed that uh, upon me. Hey, you need to learn to do this, this, and this. You know, if you got in that situation, you know, learn how to you know build your own house, learn how to fix your own car, learn how to do your own electricity. Now, once I turned 18, you know, or got older, I was like, well, I don't want to be like you. I want to be different. So I'm more on the electronic side, you know, using the computers and stuff. And he was more of the hands-on, you know, type of guy. So. Okay. But uh, I, he kind of turned me into a workaholic, though, because <laughs> I'm always trying to learn. I yeah. don't. I use up all my free time learning new things, you know, new good. little software, yeah. you know. So, and uh, I remember one day when I came home, he goes, "You need some free time, man. You got you, you you're working too much. If you're working 70 hour weeks, even if I'm working 50 hour weeks, I'm still at home learning, playing, again. learning new software, yeah. playing with new software." you know, trying to see if I can start a new company online and stuff. So I'm always doing something. So I probably only spend like, I'll probably only 5% of personal life. <laughs> so, because I do have other companies I'm trying to start up, you know, so I am a one man company right now, but if I got hurt, I, it would hurt my company. So if I got an accident or got sick, so that's why I've got other companies, you know, diversify and see if I can get other com income coming in right I'm now. Over so over uh, right, let's switch gears for a moment. Let okay. me now invite you into my time machine. All right. <laughs> that is surrounded with beautiful, warm, blue Caribbean water. Okay. <laughs> what is your earliest childhood memory? Earliest childhood memory. Wow. Um, mm -mm -mm. Hmm. I remember kindergarten going to a private school uh, as a kid. I don't remember too many memories of you know the baby, but you know when I was three or four years old, going to kindergarten to a private school in East Texas, um, and playing with friends and stuff, and then eventually 
graduating kindergarten and going to a public school, so I do have a lot of great memories of, you know, it's such a small school hanging out with these, you know, with these friends. Mm. Uh, Why do you think that memory is so clear? Um, I think it was just the, uh, the environment. It was a very private uh, church school, so um, um, the things they taught us, you know, that I remember going to church. I remember they had like church sessions during Wednesdays. Um, um, the teachers, uh, I even remember even reaching out to the teachers, even when I was like in high school, I, I, I found them and located them and reached out to them. Um, uh, but uh, I don't know, I just, I just remember it was, I was always like in a happy, you know, I was happy when I was that time, <laughs> you know, so, oh, you and it was a much more school because I think there was no, I don't, I don't know, it, hard to explain, but when you have only a class of uh, a school when there's only like maybe 30 kids in the whole, like kindergarten, the first and second, that was it, you know, very small, you become you know, real close friends with everybody at that time. And then what's funny is that when I moved to the public school, two or three of those kids came with me and went to that school in our hometown. So we all grew up together all the way to high school and graduated together. And we always talk about, hey, you remember when we in kindergarten? <laughs> you know, so, <laughs> How do you uh, see that memory connecting to who you are today? Uh, um, Hmm, that's a good question. Now, I don't. I guess I'll try to. I try to be as best friends as possible. You know, I had close friends then, so I, when I meet new people, I try to be give them that respect I would want. You know, but try to be as friendly as possible to everyone. Um, so, and I always try to make new friends too, no matter what. You know, that you know doesn't matter. Um, the race, their politics, or anything, or where they're from, mm. uh, age, <laughs> anything. I try to make new friends and stuff, but I, uh, I also I'm also very picky who I'm going to be friends with because I want to make sure they're a positive uh, person in my life, you know. So um, um, that will motivate me to even go further too. So I have friends that are like doctors and stuff, you know, and I'm, I'm even though they're I'm doing I'm happy in my life. I'm always trying to. Uh, be even better, you know, when you got somebody who's a doctor, I have a friend who's a federal <laughs> agent, you know, yeah. you know, they do cool things, so I'm always trying to uh, mm, be a better intriguing. person, but uh, um, Can I offer an interpretation to the yeah. thought picture you created yeah. in my mind? I just love the the connection with mm -hmm. learning mm -hmm. and friendships. Yeah. So like school has been a thing where you're constantly learning. Yeah. And in that you're building friendships. So you yep. remember kindergarten, you remember transition, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, but to see the friendships and how important that is to you, you know, in, in the building. So I just love that. And to see I'm that. still friends with people I grew up when I was four years old. I still talk to them. That's you know? amazing. I as I well, mean, interestingly yeah. enough, I as well. Yeah. I carry that same, uh, yeah. which is really cool, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. I mean, I don't know how many people can say that. Like, hey, I'm still friends with my, you know, f you know, four-year-old best friend. You know, yeah. I still am. I still talk to them. You know, they, have, you know, they got their own life with yeah, family I was about and stuff. To say that too. They yeah, all have they kids and still multiple kids, but I still keep up with them. Hey, did you go see that movie with your kids? Yeah. You know, so I, I like call them up. You know, and um, it is I, here's a good example. You know, the movie Avengers came out. Right. Okay. So I called my best friend, who's a doctor, and we were collecting comics when we were eight years old. Wow. And those comics now are movies, so we started laughing like, dude, man, did you ever think when we were eight years old <laughs> that they would make a movie off the comics that we were collecting? Yeah. And so it's got mind blowing, but it's cool to call them up and say, hey, you know, you're, you're collecting those comics, you know, so, um, but. Uh, it's good. Um, if we fast forward. No, I try to do, try, my, try my best to keep up with friends, you yeah. know, even though if they move away, even my military friends, I'm really close to my military Air Force friends. I call them up all the time or text and hey, you know, we still joke around and stuff. So yeah, I'm glad uh, like when we we connect on Facebook and see mm -hmm. if they're mutual friends. Yeah. Like that fascinates me. Yeah. If we see mutual friends in that yeah. group, right? If we fast forward to when you were twelve, what was your favorite song? Favorite song? Oh man, so twelve I probably uh, say let's see here. Either I was at I was probably into mm, twelve what so I was mm, all right, eighth grade now, right about that time. So, either some slow R and B, right? Like Jodeci or Shy. What song oh, do you remember? Oh, uh, well, I do remember uh, Jodeci, like, uh, like Stay. All right. And then, um, 
And then I was also at probably that time also into like Metallica at the same time. Yeah, it was it's like kind a, of a mix here and cap, you know, but uh, like Metallica and Inner Samlin and One and stuff like that. Sweet. So it's kind of, it's interesting because it depends on what mood I was in. You switched. <laughs> but I was, yeah, I would go back and forth, you know, um, but uh, uh, I was also big into sports at that time. So when I'm playing sports, I was either listening to hard metal rock and stuff. While I'm chilling, doing homework, I'm listening to slow R&B, yeah. you know. So, and I'd be listening to radio when I was 12 years old, so that time, so. Um. All right, well, we've arrived at our destination, but before we get off of this time okay. machine, there's a small declaration form, so it's yes or no, we're going to move pretty quickly here. Okay. Are you ready? I'm ready. Tony, have you chosen someone to pass on your skills to? My skills too? Yes or no? Uh, yes I or no? Somebody, I have yes an or, idea. Yes or, no. yes or no? <laughs> <laughs> yes or no? What? Yes. yes. Are you married? No. Do you have children? Yes. Do you believe in God? Yes. Do you have an inner circle of friends? I have a what? Inner circle of friends. Yes. Do you watch TV for more than three hours a day? More than three hours a day? Uh, no. How about three hours a week? Yes. What about screen time? The phone under the computer, is it more than eight or less than eight hours a day? What's that? More than eight or less than eight hours a day? Uh, uh, the screen. TV? Oh, screen? Watching the screen on yeah. t uh, the motor or computer? Or oh my goodness. <laughs> it's probably 14 hours a day. <laughs> If you had to share with us your own unique real statement, a statement that represents who you are, what would you say that is? To me is pass on your knowledge. Love it. So this is a great yeah. pleasure. Before you leave, is there anything else you'd like to share with our amazing audience? No, nope, that's it. I, I had a great time. <laughs> Tony My first time. So. <laughs> Thank you for being on what is inspired by 12 Minute Convos with Angel. It was nice meeting you. Did you have fun? Yeah, I had fun. I had it was a great time. <laughs>